Good morning, everybody. Uh, a few announcements. I believe that today is the last day for the Buckner Shoe Drive, so all things that are going to be donated, brought for that, need to be here and given to Denise. Um, it's also a backpack Sunday, so we'll just have a little blessing for our kids going back to school. Just kind of a little bit of encouragement. Uh, next Sunday is going to be a very special Sunday. Uh, Zane Gilbert will be being baptized as a part of that service. And then also hopefully we'll be able to maybe give away a few Bibles uh, to a couple kids and, and start off with uh, Children's Church. So we'll see how that goes next week, see what happens. And otherwise, uh, one really big thing, there is a sign-up sheet uh, this is for the food pack over at Grand Meadow. The food this year will be going to Haiti to an orphanage and to the Ukraine to an orphanage. Especially that 6 o'clock shift is a, lot, a little harder to fill. So if you could volunteer to help with that 6 o'clock shift, it would be appreciated. Uh, just keep that in mind if you want to help with the food pack. Uh, but the sign-up sheet is there. I'm going to try to get these numbers worked out. Uh, hopefully by next Sunday you have a pretty good idea where things are going to land. So you can sign up, let me know what would be a possibility to work for that. It would be appreciated. Uh, those are kind of the basic announcements that I have. Is there anything else that you want to bring up or share? It's neat to see all the quilts that you're doing back there. That's an exciting project. Anything else you want to talk about or share? They're doing good? Okay, good. Yeah. Well, it was nice to get a little bit of rain. I don't know how much we got here in town, but you know, we'll keep praying for that and hoping and seeing what happens. So um, all right, well, our opening meditation. As we continue our journey of faith, the question today is this. Are we called to look for signs of God's presence or are we called to be a sign of God's presence? 
The answer, as you might expect, is yes. We are the ones who are trying to be tuned into God's wavelength. Listening to God's broadcast, therefore, we must look for the signs that God is at work in and around us always. Today, let our prayer time not just be a call for God to act around us, but to give thanks for the activity that is already happening. Remember, we are more than passive observers. We are active presenters, active signs of God's presence in the world. Today, let us gather to once again commit ourselves to presenting the goodness of God in the world around us each day. And we do that best by how we care. How we care for one another and seek reconciliation whenever possible. Seeking opportunity to care for God's people everywhere by giving and helping and loving. Let us make time to care for the whole family of God by advocating for a just distribution of the resources that God has given for our use and by standing with those who have been, pushing to the mar- have been pushed to the margins of our society. As disciples of Jesus Christ, it is our daily duty to care by remembering our call to care as a way of being a sign of God's care for creation. What is the sign? It is us. The blessing of the backpacks. Today we show how much we care for our students of all ages and those in the educational profession by bringing forth any and all backpacks here in the sanctuary, but also extending our prayers to all in our community. Congregation, will you fill the backpacks of students and those throughout our community with your love, prayers, and thoughts, support? If so, say, we will. we will. At the age of 12, Jesus was found in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. It is also written that God promised to instruct and teach us in the way we should go. And that's the way we may gain wisdom for the future. We thank you for each student and their life among us and the future before them. Lead them in your way, your truth, and your life. Let each classroom they enter be a place of life and light, warmth, and welcome, discovery, and growth. Give them good friends and let them be good friends for others. Set them a task which demand their best efforts and lead them to accomplishments with satisfy and delight. Let them not take failures and disappointments of a measure of their worth, but as opportunities for new learning and new beginnings. Open their hearts to life and their minds to learning. Let holy wisdom be their companion. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As you're able, would you please rise and join with me in the call to worship. Pilgrims on the way, when we feel lost and ask for a sign to show us the way out of our confusion, When we face obstacles and barriers that keep us from the life God has called us to, when we cannot find our way out of conflict and discord, when we struggle to pay attention to how God has work all around us, Pilgrims on the way, when we watch for signs of God among us. Let us remember that each of signs of God's presence for others. The prayer of confession. The act of confessing our sin is not simply a resuscitation of our faults and wrongs, but also an opportunity to receive God's mercy and share in that abundant grace. Confident of God's love for us, let offers our prayers first in silence. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. Join with me now. Holy God, we ask for your help, your power, your spirit, so that we can amend our lives and grow more each day into the image of Christ. We confess that we fear what is different. We confess that it's easier to lock the doors of our community than to receive those who don't look like we look, love like we love, or vote the way we vote. We confess that we have not lived out your calls to share an abundant life and unconditional love. 
We believe that you have the power to turn us around to a more inclusive way of living. So we ask you to do that. We ask you to give us the courage to change. We ask that you give us the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love to be your people in all we say and do. Amen. Our opening hymn is We Are the Church, number 558. Tossed and driven on the restless sea of time, rolling 
howling clouds and howling tempests of the seed of bright sunshine in the land of perfect day when the mist is rolled away we will understand it better by and by by and by when the morning comes when the saints of god are gathered home we will Tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching. We're going to read today from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our faith hymn is the servant song in the faith we sing 2222. Bye. 
finds a charm in thee. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Please be seated. <coughs> Ten-year-old David and his cousin wanted in the worst way to go to the movies. They knew if they went to a Saturday matinee, they could get it much cheaper, but they still had one rather large problem. They didn't have any money. And so it was Grandpa who came up with the suggestion. He said, you know, when I was your guys' age, I was able to get money by uh, selling tadpoles to guys that were going down to the marina to fish. Well, you mean night crawlers, don't you, Grandpa? No, no, tadpoles. They are much better bait than, than night crawlers, and I would sell them for 10 cents a cup. Well, where are you going to get tadpoles? Well, you go in the backyard, there's that marshy area back there, and there should be plenty of tadpoles back there. So the two boys grabbed a pail and a butterfly net, and they went out. Sure enough, they got in that marshy area, and there were plenty of tadpoles. They scooped them up, put them in the bucket, and they were ready to go out to the front of the driveway and start their new business. They had a car table, two folding chairs, and... They had separated the tadpoles into small styrofoam cups. David's cousin had put up a sign that said, 10 cents a cup. And they waited for the fishermen to arrive. And they waited, and they waited, and they waited, and nobody was coming. Then finally, a man showed up on a bicycle. He looked at the two boys, and he smiled, and he said, Why, well, here seems to be two enterprising young men. Ten cents a cup. Yep, ten cents a cup. Then he looked at him kind of funny because he couldn't figure out how this guy was going to go down to the marine to fish on that bicycle and things, but they handed the man a cup, and to their surprise, all of a sudden, he just took that cup and he gulped it down. The two boys stood there in amazement, not knowing what to say, and kind of a sour look came to the man's face, and he said, Boys, that is the worst tasting iced tea I have ever drank. You need to have more sugar in it. And he smiled, and he rode away on his bike. Well, with that, the two boys took down their table and chairs and tore up the sign and took the tadpoles and put them back in the marshy area. And they never did actually make it to the movies that summer. Sometimes the best plans of trying to work things out does not work. And you look at the details that Jesus gives for kind of going and resolving conflicts, and they're pretty detailed here. He says, well, first you go to the person, you deal with it directly. You know, if there's an issue or something, deal with it directly. If that doesn't work, you need to get an advocate. You need to get somebody to go with you and try to explain the situation, work it out. And if that doesn't work, then you're kind of at the intervention. You know, you take it to the church, and then you hope that works. And he realizes that with even all those steps and all that you're doing here, sometimes you just are not going to work through it. That's just the way it is. And so then he says, okay, if that's the case, if you can't work through it, then that person needs to be to you like the tax collector and the Gentile. So sometimes as hard as you work at it, you know, as much as you try, you're not going to be able to work through a problem or a situation. It's just not going to happen. That's the way it goes. Well, for Becky, she was really excited about the opportunity to be the bell ringer at her church. Because this was a special job. The only way that you got to be a bell ringer is if somebody passed away or moved away. And so she had waited two years and finally, it was her chance. The head usher had sent her an email saying, you know, you're up to ring the bells. 
And so she was really excited. But she also was kind of nervous, and somebody had just told her, said, it's well, real easy. All you have to do is just pull the rope, you know? Give it a few tugs, and you're good. Well, so she had butterflies in her stomach as she went to church that morning. She actually had to have her husband accompany her up to the balcony to watch her fulfill her duties. She saw the rope attached, and so she went and she untied it, and she began to pull, and it was tough. I mean, it was just like taking all her strength to pull that rope and ring that bell, but she was determined. And finally, when she was through, she was exhausted. Her husband was just kind of smiling. He just kind of watched her. Afterwards, people came up to her, and one person said, you know, that's the first time that I've seen anybody try to ring the bell by hand in years. <laughs> you know, and, and another person said, yeah, you were really brave to do that, you know, to ring that bell like you did. And then one lady came up to her and said, you know, I never did it that way before. The only thing I ever did was push the button. Well, she went home, and a couple of days later, she got another email from the head usher. And he said, I want to thank you for your service in ringing the bell, but I have a couple suggestions. One, you only need to do it for about a minute, not for five. And the other thing is, is that, you know, it's probably a lot easier to use the button. Well, Becky just kind of smiled and laughed and she said, well, I guess I'm not fired as the church bell ringer yet. And, you know, you look at life and it's a lot about Grace. You know, because it's interesting, Jesus says, you know, let that person be to you as the Gentile and the tax collector. Who did Jesus usually minister to the most? <laughs> and who seemed to have a special place in Jesus' heart but the Gentile and the tax collector? You know, things happen, there's going to be conflict, things, and sometimes we're not going to be able to work through it. But there still always needs to be room for grace. And I think that's part of what Jesus is saying here as you look at it is, is that even you know, when things don't turn out the way that we hope or expect or whatever, you do what you can to try to leave some room for grace and just see where it goes. And that's, I think, part of what Jesus is saying today as he shares in Matthew's Gospel. So let's pray. Lord, there's always going to be conflict and difficulties and problems and it's hard work trying to sort through those things and trying to get people on the same page and getting people to agree. Like you say in this passage, wherever a couple people agree, that's usually a pretty good sign. But in the midst of it all, whatever happens, may we make room for grace. We see that in the way that you dealt with the tax collector and the Gentile and everyone that came your way. And so may we find grace in our hearts, may we receive it, and realize how much grace you offer to each of us. As we bring this prayer in your precious name, amen. We now go to God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, friend of the neglected and the despised folk, friend also of the cherished and honored ones, we offer to you our prayers for this world for which Christ gave us all. We pray for the overthrow of the arrogant and cruel and for discontent in the souls of the greedy and the careless. We pray for the uplifting of the meek and merciful and for the encouragement of the poor and the pure. We pray for the recovery of the bruised and the lost and the peace of those who thirst for righteousness. We pray for the feeding of the hungry in body or spirit and for the healing of those who are diseased in the body or mind. We pray for the comfort of the suffering and the grieving and for the befriending of the lonely, timid, or socially awkward people. We pray for the humbling of the church if it becomes proud and for courage whenever it is shunned or persecuted. We pray for the strong and the weak in this congregation and for the spiritual health of all other churches in the community. You, Holy Friend, are more eager to give than we are to receive. 
Deal firmly with your servants that gathered here now that we get rid of everything that clutters our souls and make way for all the new blessings you have in store for us. We want to continue to always pray for rain and for the renewal of uh, the earth and, and just for those especially suffering from natural disasters throughout the world where there's been fire and earthquakes, hurricanes. We pray for our food pack coming up and the other activities of our church and congregation. We just pray for our kids in school and teachers. And again, we know that your grace is always there. Help us now as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we will have the receiving of our offering. prayer. God of love and compassion, we ask you to dedicate the tithes and offerings we bring to worship. We do this in the hope that you will do more with them than we could ever do on our own to heal the brokenness and division in our world. Remind us that the work of reconciliation does not our list because we have put something in the offering and that mission field is within our arms reach. This we pray in the Redeemer's holy name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our departing hymn is 473, Lead Me, Lord.
now these words of sending forth and benediction. Travelers on the journey of faith, pay attention. God has work all around you. May you go ready to witness the signs of God's love in your midst and be a sign of God's love wherever you go. Amen.